Hello everyone, it's Nat, and I'm going to be starting yet another new mini sewn series. Jack and I tend to avoid talking about current events because it's a little hard to stay neutral and unbiased when covering these issues, but there are so many things that are going on in the world that I, I want to talk about with you guys, so here goes nothing. In the new series, What's Going On?, I'm going to talk about current news and events that aren't getting as much media attention in English-speaking news outlets as I think they should. I'm going to attempt to be as unbiased and as fact-based as possible. And I will also try to give you the necessary background and history that you'll need to better comprehend what's going on and why. Before I get into it, I want to make an exciting announcement. As most of you hopefully already know, the How Did We Not Know That podcast has been organizing a hashtag Stop Asian Hate fundraiser in order to raise money for the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund. We've received so many generous donations from our listeners, and we have been able to raise a total of $882. This money will be used to protect and promote the civil rights of Asian Americans through litigation, advocacy, education, and organizing. Jack and I wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone who contributed or shared information about this fundraiser. We are so moved to see such widespread support for the Asian American community. Thank you. Also, I just wanted to remind all of you that we finally have official How Did We Not Know That merch. For only $3, you can be the lucky owner of a beautiful sticker featuring a very adorable Abraham Lincoln. He's got his AirPods in. He's pondering to himself, probably listening to the podcast. This sticker is really perfect for laptops, water bottles, notebooks, or pretty much any other surface you can stick a sticker to. You can check out the design on our Instagram at HDWNKT, and while you're there, don't forget to follow us. If you'd like to purchase a sticker for $3 each, you can order through Venmo. You can find our business account by searching at HDWNKT. Please include the amount of stickers you would like, as well as a shipping address, and make sure to mark the payment as private in order to keep your information safe. Thank you everyone who's listening for your support. This is such an exciting milestone for the podcast and Jack and I are just so excited to share this with you all. All right, so here we go finally. In the first episode of this mini-sode series, I am going to talk about recent aggressions between the Indonesian military and separatists in the territory of Papua. So just as a side note before I continue, I feel like Indonesian history and affairs is not well known or discussed in Western education and media, which is like super confusing because it's a huge country. It's the fourth most populous country in the world, just right behind the US, and it's the largest Muslim majority country in the world. Indonesian history is incredibly complex and interesting, but today I'm going to be focusing on a specific region in order to talk about a conflict that has been unfolding over the past several decades. So just some basic background, Indonesia was formerly a Dutch colony and was known as the Dutch East Indies. In 1949, Indonesia gained its independence from the Netherlands, but then the new country was faced with some tough decisions. You see, Indonesia today is actually the largest archipelagic nation, and it's made up of over 17,000 islands. Out of those islands, roughly 6,000 are inhabited, each with its own culture, traditions, and history. Over 700 languages are spoken in Indonesia, although the official language of the country is Bahasa Indonesia. So when Indonesia finally gained its independence, it had to decide what Indonesia actually is. At first, there was no strong national unity tying all of these islands together into one patriotic nation, which brings us to the regions of Papua and West Papua. They are located on the eastern half of the archipelago, and Papua shares a border with Papua New Guinea, which is an independent nation. Although Indonesia is incredibly diverse, Papua is very different from the other islands of Indonesia culturally, ethnically, and linguistically. Many people originally thought that naturally Papua would just not be acquired by Indonesia and would retain autonomy. However, 
Since the region is home to many valuable resources and also contains the world's sixth largest gold mine and the second largest copper mine, Indonesian forces quickly invaded the region in order to secure its involvement in the area. In 1969, seven years after Indonesia invaded West Papua, the United Nations oversaw a referendum in which Papuans voted whether or not they wanted to become independent. However, it is widely believed that this vote was not a true representation of Papua's feelings. Indonesians handpicked less than 1% of the Papuan population and warned them that if they made the wrong choice, the consequences would be violent. The referendum decided that Papua would remain a part of Indonesia, and since then, indigenous Papuans have suffered from mass murders, extrajudicial killings, and discrimination in healthcare, education, and access to economic opportunities. Internet access has been shut off from time to time. Local journalists are harassed by security forces, and foreign journalists are not permitted to enter West Papua. On top of this, Papuans have been devastated by preventable diseases and malnutrition. Many Papuans believe that they are in the middle of a slow-motion genocide. Since the 1960s, they have been progressively marginalized and forcibly expropriated in order for the Indonesian government to reap the benefits of military-backed logging projects, palm oil, and mining operations. Which brings us to today. Tensions between Indonesian military forces and Papuan separatist groups have reached a dangerous tipping point within the past month. The Indonesian government has officially labeled Papuan separatists as terrorists and have sent elite soldiers known as Satan's forces to the region. These troops have been deployed in the past to other disputed territories in Indonesia, such as Aceh and Timor-Leste. The reason for this sudden escalation involves the ambush and assassination of the head of Indonesian intelligence operations in Papua, General Gusti Putu Dani Karya Nugraha, on April 25th of this year. The members of the Papuan separatist group called the West Papua National Liberation Army, or TPNPB, have claimed responsibility for his shooting. The general had been touring the central highlands of Papua in order to investigate a series of attacks led by the TPNPB against Indonesian security forces within the past few months. After his assassination, Indonesian President Joko Widodo, who is more commonly referred to as Jokowi, ordered state security forces to chase and arrest all armed militants and rebels in the region. In response, Members of the TPNPB have warned of the possibility of future attacks against non-Papuan civilians in the region. So back in 1971, 96% of people living in Papua were indigenous Papuans. But because of migration of non-Papuans to the region, that number has dropped to less than half. So they're now in a minority in their own land. The Indonesian government's decision to officially label separatists as terrorists has worried human rights organizations of the possibility of future abuses and violent crackdowns. And it's not like the possibility of extreme oppression is impossible. Mass killings have been committed in the region before at the hands of security officials. From 1977 to 1978, mass killings were committed through aerial bombings using napalm and cluster bombs in the Baliam Valley of Papua. This area was known for its strong support for the separatist Free Papua movement. The estimated death toll ranges anywhere from 5,000 to tens of thousands of people. The Indonesian government has never recognized these mass killings and has denied ever deploying bombs in the region. And on July 6, 1998, over 150 West Papuans demonstrating for independence on the island of Biak were arrested or killed in coordinated attacks by Indonesian security forces. Those who were arrested were victims of torture, mutilation, and or brutal sexual assault. To this day, the personnel responsible for these attacks have never been held responsible. Papuans didn't receive any acknowledgement or support when they were being massacred in 1977 and 1998. 
Today, the conflict between Indonesian security forces and Papuan nationalists is at a recent high. But despite the likely possibility of violence and aggression, Papuans remain resilient and determined in their pursuit towards independence. West Papuans are now calling for a UN-supervised referendum on independence from Indonesia. Indonesia has been able to successfully resolve armed territorial disputes in other regions, although not without difficulty. Agreements have been made between the provinces of Aceh and Timor-Leste. Aceh remains a part of Indonesia today, while Timor-Leste has gained its independence. Through dialogue and foreign involvement, these conflicts have been resolved. It's possible that the same can be achieved in Papua. However, the dialogue required for a peaceful resolution is currently lacking between the Indonesian government and representatives of Papua. The United Nations has a mandate known as the Responsibility to Protect, or R2P. Under international law, members of the United Nations agree that they share the responsibility to protect anybody at risk of genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and crimes against humanity. The question we are faced with today is, will we continue to remain complicit and ignore the violence in West Papua, or will we finally acknowledge the long history of atrocities committed against the indigenous people that continue to this day? I encourage all of you to keep an eye out for future developments in Papua and spread awareness among your community. And before I let you go, a quick message to my Taman Taman Indonesia, Saya ingin tahu apa pendapat anda tentang masalah ini. Tolong kirim email ke howdidwenotknowthat at gmail.com dan beritahu saya pendapat anda tentang gerakan kemerdekaan Papua. Terima kasih. Thanks for listening and please stay tuned for future episodes of What's Going On. Bye!